gentlemen, it's Blind Date, and here is your host, Miss Scylla Black. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, cotton socks. Hello, and welcome to Blind Date, the show that starts with the Knicks and ends with a match. So let's meet three lovely girls hoping to meet their match tonight. And there they are. <laughs> Hello, girls. Hi, Stella. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a good show. I can feel it. I can feel it. Let's start with you, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Scylla. My name's Nikki and I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> oh, great. You know, we're so refined and quiet from Liverpool, <laughs> aren't we? Oh, no. Now, come on, Nikki. Tell everybody what you do. Have you got a job? Yes, I've got two. <laughs> What's your main? What's your main job? Well, I'm a senior office clerk for an oil company. Ooh. And I also work part-time as a barmaid. Oh, in a pub? In a pub. Yeah. What do you prefer? Oh, the pub. More men. <laughs> now, Nicky, you don't, you're not particularly keen on Scouser fellas, though, are you? I mean, you, you love Welsh persons. Oh, I love Welsh accents. You do? Especially when yellow wellies. <laughs> you love yellow wellies? Yellow wellies. And Welsh accents. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, famous, most famous, gorgeous person would have to be Steve Guttenberg with a Welsh accent. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, I think you're mental. I, mean, <laughs> I can't promise you any yellow wellies. <laughs> or even a Welsh accent. <laughs> or even, who is it again? Steve Guttenberg? Guttenberg. Gut no, I can't promise you any of that, but we can promise you a good time. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thank right, you. Sure. <laughs> Lovely natural red hair. <laughs> to you, number two. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Stella. My name's Amanda and I'm from London. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, hey, Amanda. You've got a lot of fans out there. You really have. Now, oh, Amanda, that's... what do you do? In, do you work in London? No, I don't work. I'm a drama student. Oh. <laughs> I know you actually you sing as well, don't you? You love jazz, you love the blues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what kind of songs? The blues songs, but what blue, blues songs? Um, things like Summertime and Hush Now Don't Explain and then we, can, we have a knees up, like knees up Mother Brown, you know, so everyone can join in. And everybody enjoys themselves. Yeah. Well, if you could have a knees up with anybody, men-wise, who would it be? Well, I can only name one, can't I? I have four, right. but it's Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Chancer, the bloke that plays the Chancer. Yeah. She has Being got lovely. taste. She has got taste, yes. I know, I love Jack Nicholson as an mm. actor, but, you know, I mean, a young girl like well, I you. I like experienced, mature men. Oh, you, know. you would with him. You would. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can assure you, and they'll be pleased to know we haven't got Jack Nicholson on tonight, a look-alike, but we've certainly got a lovely fella. Oh, Enjoy Blind Thank you, I will. And I wish you luck with all, Thanks, all your career, Silla. whatever you want to be. Thank all you. All right? Hello, number three. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, Silla. My name's Sam and I'm from Hampshire. Now, Sam, I know you're working very hard, but what are you working at? Tell everybody. Um, I'm a student. Um, I'm doing a degree in social science. Yes. And what do you eventually want to be? Well, I hopefully, if there's any jobs when I graduate... Oh, there will be. <laughs> I hope so. Yes, there will be. Um, I want to go into nursing. I know, I heard that's a well worth job. Thank gosh. you, Silla. Oh, it's a Thank well you. worthwhile job. And you, particularly, I believe you want to go into a paediatrics. Yeah, I do like children. Looking after little babies. I know, I that? shouldn't be oh. broody at my age. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's lovely. Well, I wish you a lot of luck in your career. Thanks. What about, she fancies Jack Nicholson. Well, what about you? I do like a man with a bit of experience as well. <laughs> so, um, I like. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People would taste that. People would well, taste that. Well, I don't know. He's a bit big, isn't he? <laughs> I, 
I do like tall men. You like them big. Yeah, but apart from that, I'm not fussy. That's why I'm here, really. <laughs> Sweetheart, if you're picked tonight, you will adore the person. Because I've met so. him just before the show, and he is, is a he sweetheart. Looking? All three girls, I think you're going to have a lot of fun tonight. In fact, a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> and especially with the guy beyond those screams. So I'll get on with the show, and I shall see you in a mo. See you later. Bye -bye. Enjoy Bye -bye. it. girls will soon be going out with a very lucky lad and now he's from Derbyshire and his name's Barnaby. Come in Barnaby! <laughs> Hello, Barnaby. How are you doing, Silla? I'm very well. Are you looking forward to all this? I certainly am. Oh, I know our girls. They're raring to go beyond <laughs> those screens. They really are. Now, tell everybody at home and indeed in the studio here, what are you doing at the moment? Because you're studying, aren't you? Yeah, I'm studying retail marketing at Manchester Polytechnic. <laughs> they like it. They like it. <clears throat> well, you do have this secret ambition burning deep down in your oh, heart. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. To be a rock star. To be star. a rock star, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what attracts you about being a rock star? Oh, I mean, it's... is it the fame? Is it the fortune? No, it's is the it girls. the groupie? It's the girls, so that's <laughs> what you said. It's the girls. What yeah. it, well, what is it? Who is your type of girl? Well, um, somebody like Naomi Campbell, I think, would be my sort of lady. I'm failing her if you can't get her. Well, Pats, like... Patsy Kensett. I'd, I'd settle for her. She's so cute. She really is. She She's is. lovely, yeah. Oh. Have you got three cute questions? To I have, yes. Tonight? Yes, I have. Well, go on, off your pop. OK. Right, question number one. Recently, I've put on a little weight. Have you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've had to make... <laughs> you put on a little weight recently. And I've had to make another notch in my belt. Ooh. How could you help me get back to my previously slim figure? And that's to number one. Well, barn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. As soon as you see me, Barnaby, you'll definitely be so lovesick, you'll definitely shed a stone or two. Do you think so? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I like the sound of that, sir. Thank you. I do like the sound of that. <laughs> she sounds devastating. Um, the same question to number two, please. Hello, Barnaby. Hi. Can I call you Barney? Yeah, do so, Thank please. You. Right, Barney. Well, first of all, I'd have to think of a nickname for your podgy bits so you don't feel too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, let's call them love handles, shall we? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. I said a little way, a little. So then, right, I'd grab <laughs> your love handles <laughs> and I'd shake them vigorously <laughs> and then I'd just wait for all your flab to just fall into my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Same question to number three, please. Um, before I answer the question, can I actually say you're sounding rather gorgeous tonight? You certainly can. <laughs> <laughs> you sound a good girl. I like this one. You like that one? I certainly do. Well, actually, I adore fat men. I love big men. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it, why? I, because the more meat, the better. <laughs> Yeah, OK. Question number two. Two number two. Is that the time already? <laughs> <laughs> I love sailing and have a two-man racing yacht at home. A what, Rob? Racing yacht. Racing have digging. Really? Yes, I have, yes. Oh. It's a race down at Rutland Water. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were crewing for me, how would you look after your skipper? Well... Barney. Yeah. First of all, I think I'd have to sit you in the middle of the boat because if you're a bit overweight, you know, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> we, have to I'm sorry. we have to distribute the weight evenly. <laughs> and uh, then I'd go downstairs into the galley and cook you a huge steak. <laughs> <laughs> so then I could make your love handles even bigger. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
The same question to number three, please. Um, OK, gorgeous. Um, <laughs> um, I'd probably swing your boom, rig up your rigging, and I'd be your busty figurehead. <laughs> Oh, dear. OK, the same question to number one, please. Well, Vaughn, I definitely wouldn't be crew and I'd be navigating the love yacht <laughs> to a desert island where you and I could have as many coconuts and bananas. <laughs> oh, dear. OK, the third question then, please. I have to admit, I'm rather forgetful. How would you make sure I never forgot our special day together? And that's to number three, please. Well, gorgeous. It's me, number three. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's obvious to say that you'd have a good time with me, but as a special memento, I'd probably give a packet of soap powder to remind you of me because I'm squeaky clean and Definitely biologically active. <laughs> good stuff, good answer. I like that. Yeah, I certainly do, yes. Okay, um, can I have the same question to number one, please? Well, I'd have to give you the most biggest smackeroony you've ever had in your life. <laughs> You'd never, ever forget my touch, and then you'd never, ever want to brush your teeth again. <laughs> she sounds like it. She sounds like an octopus. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she's lovely. Right, the same question to number two, then, please. Hello, my love handle. Hi. <laughs> Can I call you Barney Bear? Yes, please. Oh. Everybody does. Well, Barney Bear, I haven't got a handkerchief to tie a knot in, so instead, I'd have to tie a knot in something very close to my heart and give that to you. Uh, <laughs> I think he's <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sounds like a nightmare. Well, those three girls, three very lively sure girls that, yes. there, Barnaby. Yeah. I know you're shaking in your boots, and I bet you're sorry that you opened your gob about oh, no. being a little bit overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis on the little, sir. I know, because you look terrific to me. Now it's making my end up time. And those three girls beyond those screens are dying to know which one you've chosen. Mm -hmm. But don't make your mind up just yet, because there's our Graham with a quick recap. Well, Barnaby, will you choose Hot Clips number one? She'd love to be your desert island disco girl. <laughs> or will you pick number two, the love handler who might get her knickers in a knot? <laughs> or perhaps you prefer biologically active number three? The bigger they come, <laughs> the better she likes it. <laughs> the decision is yours. Barney, who are you going to go for, Chuck? I'm afraid it's going to have to be number three, Silla. Oh. <laughs> now, Barney, you're in for a treat, but, I mean, you will be disappointed at the two that you turned I'm down. I'm afraid so, yes. Oh, how could you? First of all, you turned down number one, and that was our Nicky from Liverpool. Come in, Nicky! <laughs> What do you think, <laughs> Barnaby? Gorgeous. Well, you turned her down, she's gone now. You also turned down number two with the love handles. Oh. <laughs> this is your love handle that you turned down. It was Amanda from London. Come in, Amanda. <laughs> What about Amanda? Because totally different from Nicky Hook. Mm. <laughs> I think mean, he's biting his knuckles. You'll bite more than that. Oh, that gorgeous. Never mind about that. Amanda's gone now, but here's your date for this evening. You chose a great person. Well, what's she doing behind her? Great personality.
to you chose number three. That was our Sam from Hampshire. Come in, Sam! <laughs> Where you're going on your date? Who's going to choose? Um, no, come on, you you choose because if it's I, I right, get okay, the blame. Yeah, I'll do it. All right, Barnaby, there you go, sweetheart. Right. And what does it say? Oh. No, see, he hasn't put on. He's not really. A trip to Bath. Oh. <laughs> What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, you're going to arrive in style for a start. You're going to be horse-driven. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yes, in a lovely big carriage. You're going to be are you staying. Romantic? Pardon. Are you romantic? Oh yes, you... yes, I am. Are you? Yes. And you... well, romantic. Tell me about romance. I mean, you're going to be going punting down the River Avon. Excellent. Yes, and picnicking on the banks. Excellent. <laughs> yes, and going to stay at the most beautiful Bass Bar Hotel. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now you will enjoy yourselves, won't you? Promise. Thank you will have Promise. a lot of fun. Yes. 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 All we ask is. You will come back next yeah. week <laughs> and tell us all about it. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Barnaby and Sam. Enjoy that. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> For last week, Pete and Jenny spent their blind date in romantic Venice. I could get used to this, you know. Look at the signs up here. Look, the lion eyes. And do you know what's lovely? What's really nice? What's that? No cars. There isn't a car in sight. Well, these, these are the I cars, aren't they? I've seen a car. <laughs> yes, I know, but these are a much more civilised way of getting around. You know? I think it's just so lovely. What about if it rains heavily? Does it ever rain heavily in Venice? Um, then the water must rise. Yeah. Isn't that what happened in 1966 or something? The place flooded. That's when England won the World Cup, my love. Oh, you mean the World Cup? Jenny, I feel a song coming on. Oh, no. Oh, God. oh no, please. Restrain oh, yourself. Oh, solid me. No, no, restrain yourself, Peter. Come hold me tight. <laughs> Kiss me, my darling. <laughs> be my tonight. Oh, no. Tomorrow will be too late. Well, on tomorrow. <laughs> it's now or never. My love won't wait. Oh my God! <laughs> I've never had so many birds right. come after me in one time. No, I should imagine life. not. <laughs> It's got, it's got to be the spaghetti, Look hasn't it? it? Got the yards of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got to be a mouthful here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know to eat spaghetti, don't you? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Laguna Morano Glass. Shut up. After you. Oh, look at these. Colour. Blue is absolute. That's that is a midnight really blue. matches my eyes. <laughs> oh, Jenny, here's the next time we come to Venice and maybe our honeymoon, yes? <laughs> well, Pete and Jenny, welcome back to Blind Date. Now, t I'm dying to know, how was your Venetian date? I mean, did you wish it could have gone on forever or... Were you glad it was all over at the end of the day? Shall we find out? My initial reaction to seeing Jenny for the first time on the show was I was pleasantly surprised and quite pleased. <laughs> the first thing I noticed was he had incredibly blue eyes, very blue eyes, and he had a very steady, clear gaze, and he looked very presentable. Initially, when I first met Jenny uh, and started to talk to her, she just wouldn't stop talking. Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Things started to go a little bit sour between us. When I began to realise that perhaps he was a little bit more enthusiastic about me than I was about him. She, we arrived in Venice, we had two and a half hours before we were going out to eat. Uh, I asked Jenny if she'd like to come out and, and visit the surroundings of Venice, uh, to which she replied, I think I'd rather do my hair. <laughs> I find having 
in my own space is, is very important to me and there were points in the date where I really felt I wanted to be alone. <laughs> all in all, Jenny and I really haven't got a lot in common. I like fashion, she doesn't. I like sport, she doesn't. So really, we really didn't have a lot in common at all. Peter loves clothes. Uh, we spent more time looking around men's clothes shops than we did around women's, which I found quite unusual. It's not really the other way round, but... As we went along, it was just the niggly bits that got to me, the way she could eat and so fast. And, you know, as soon as she'd eaten, uh, she was off and wanted to go shopping. I think I'll sum Peter up by saying that perhaps he does tend to lack confidence with women. He's very tense most of the time, or at least he was with me. I mean, that could easily have been me, the way he was reacting to me. I think Jenny will sum me up by saying, I'm certainly not her type of guy. Um, I'm very independent, and I think she might just say that I'm a, a proven bachelor through and through. The words that ran through my mind immediately were confirmed bachelor. <laughs> I've been to many cities in the world, and Venice is certainly the most romantic I've ever been to. But with Jenny, there was certainly no romance at all. <laughs> You know, I had such high hopes for you from last week's show. What happened? I mean, how could you not fall in love, even though two of you are opposites? In Venice, I mean, so romantic. What happened? Was he too tense? <laughs> I did fall in love, Everybody. but I fell in love with Venice. It was wonderful. You never fell in love with Pete. I'm sorry. No. Well, you, you do... Don't be sorry, you're all right, please. <laughs> really had a go at her eating habits as well. <coughs> How do you feel about that, Jen? I do everything quickly. I walk quickly. I eat quickly. I just do everything quickly, you know. <laughs> oh, <quite> everything. <laughs> well, Peach is a very fast lady. Yes, would, very fast. Would you describe her a bit too fast for you? Um, in what way, Silla? <laughs> well, she just said she does everything quickly, you know. Yeah, eats I quickly. like to take time over things. You do. Mm. And obviously there's, there's absolutely no romance here. In fact, there's a, a bit of a debate going on about who spoke the most. He said you, you rabbited non-stop. He can rabbit as well. Yes, go on, have a go. <laughs> Goodness, he really does. He can, yeah. But what... And he sings as well, which is even no, worse. No, he doesn't <laughs> sing. No, no, oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't sing. <laughs> That's torture, we, we heard that. But you gave it a full gut so I, I had a go. But no... Go. End of the day, no romance. No, no spark. No, yes. nothing. I mean, would it, would it be safe to say that you'll try and remember each other for as long as you can? <laughs> <laughs> Both oh, of sorry. Of course we will. You will. We're yeah. still friends, though. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Aren't yes, Jenny? Yes. yes. Two very nice people, but not right for each other. That's right. And thank you both for coming back and Thanks, telling Sarah. us all about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny and Pete. The gorgeous girl who has to choose one of these three lucky lads. See you in a couple of minutes. You know, just lately, oh, girls, come closer. <laughs> now, to tell, just lately, I don't know about you, but I've been feeling very limp. <laughs> I don't seem to have the energy anymore. I don't. I mean, it was only this morning Bobby said to me, my, my husband Bobby said to me, come on, Scylla, where's your get up and go? I said, it's got up and gone. <laughs> but enough of my problems. Here's three lads bursting with energy and raring to go. Here they are on a blind date. You number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Good evening, sir. My name's Greg and I'm from Birmingham. Yeah. 
Ah, that's a lovely accent. Actually, it is a lovely accent from Burnley. I love it myself, Silla. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really speak like this, sorry. Ah, well, what's wrong with speaking like uh, that? Nothing at all, Silla. It's absolutely smashing. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely uh, incredible. Oh, uh, wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Greg, what do you do up there in Birmingham? Uh, I'm a sales executive for... Um, sales executive? I'm actually a sales executive. Well, let's get down and talk about this, Silla. Yeah. I'm a sales executive for a uh, mechanical breakdown insurance company. Oh, terrific. I know we've got a bright one But your real passion, I believe, is, uh, well, flying. Yeah, I've done actually some microlight flying with a friend of mine. Micro flying. Now, is, micro -flying. That, is that hang gliding with an engine? Is that what it is? Very much so, yeah, very much so. It's, uh, it's a little bit more advanced than that, Naila. <laughs> if you could fly with anybody in the world, lady-wise, who would it be? Who would you take? Well, it'd have to be Demi Moore. Ah, Demi Moore, I don't know whether we've got her on the show, but we'll soon find out. Thank you very much. I'm moving on to number two. Hello, number two. What's your name and where do you come from? Hello, yes, sir. I'm Martin and I'm from Perth in Western Australia. Oh. <laughs> so, look, anyone that's watching that I know at home, g'day. <laughs> I know you were born in the UK, weren't you? That's right, yeah. Yeah, we immigrated. I was sort of what you call a quasi-Aussie, so we went over when I was uh, five years old. Ah, and brought up in lovely Perth. A lot of Scousers <laughs> live in Perth, you know. There's a lot of everything in Perth there, still. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what are you doing at the moment? Well, I'm a director of a company. Um, it's a design company and also a London art company. Isn't that a lovely accent? You don't think they're real when you watch Neighbours and Home and Away? <laughs> This is the real business, isn't it? Gorgeous girls. <laughs> yeah, no worries, yeah. <laughs> well, title ladies, I know they're all dying to know who your favourite lady would be if you had the choice to go out with anybody in the whole wide world. And there are many ladies. Who would you go out with? Well, I really like um, Catherine Zeta Jones from uh, Darling Buds of May. <laughs> yeah, she's very pretty. She's <laughs> What turned you on to her? She's very fit. Yeah, she's really fit. Lovely. She is absolutely gorgeous. Enjoy blind date. I shall see you in a mo. Oh, hello. Last but definitely not least, you've been sitting there I'm very patiently. Patient. Yes. Oh, the man in red. <laughs> <laughs> Bar number three, tell everybody your name and where you come from. Rysela. My name's John and I'm from Hertfordshire. What do you do for a living? Right, so I work uh, for a major UK bank in their marketing department. You do, you do. So you're a clever little lad, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> I don't disagree with us, but uh, yes. <laughs> and spare time, what do you do in your spare, spare time? time. Um, well, a few of my friends and I, we've got a boat in Cambridge and we go... You own this boat? Between us, yeah. You do? We do. It's not How a very big, big one. Ah. The boat. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> Favourite ladies, if you could get any... Mm. Girl on that Ooh. boat of yours. Who right, well, that's a very easy question. It's got to be Julia Roberts. Oh. Yes. She's, she's pretty she tasty. Is. But think. she's tough now. No chance she of is, Julia. Yeah, unfortunately. Never mind. But we've got a super girl beyond those screens. I've met her briefly before the show. And I'm going to meet her again now. So all three of you enjoy it. And I shall see you later, all right? See you later, lads. See you later. Thank you. say there three lovely guys now who will it be one two or three <laughs> now that's a decision this lovely girl has to make her name's angie and she's from right here in london come in angie <laughs> and tell the lads over there what you do Okay. I work for Trust Accountants as a receptionist. Yes, but you really are into fashion. You would yeah. really love to be a, a fashion illustrator. That's really, right. I do a fashion illustration and design as a hobby. Yes. Yeah, and, and I you, spend a lot of time on it. You, you did go to evening classes. That's right? right, yeah, and I'm also studying Italian. Oh. So well, you it. love everything Italian, yeah. Angie. Men, food, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the language. Yeah. You're learning it. that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And you've got three questions there, I have, Angie. I have. So fire away in your own time with the first one. Okay, hi, guys, are you ready? Hi, yes. 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 <laughs> 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 yes, Angie. Okay, here we go. 
<laughs> right. After an awful day at work, I then come round to your place and manage to burn the dinner, flood the kitchen and nearly poison the cat. How did you react when you came in? That's number one. Hi, Ange. Hi. I'm a bit of a joker, so I think initially I'd be stern about the burn. The flood, I'd have understood. What? And we could both get soggy about the moggy. Okay, number two. G'day, Ange. Hi. Oh. You're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if I got this right. You've burnt my dinner, yeah? That's right. <laughs> well, our what's dinner, new, Ange? Our dinner. Oh, you've burnt Didn't our right dinner. Enough. All right. Well, what's new? You always burn our dinner. But that's okay, because that's just one of those cute, crazy things that I like about you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're going to be eating out tonight, and uh, as far as the cat goes, well, I never really liked the cat that much anyway. <laughs> I'm impressed, I'm impressed. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? And finally, number three. What I'd do is I'd take you out uh, for an exotic meal, just the two of us, oh, uh... and I'd leave the cat back at the ranch to clear up all your mess. Our mess. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good. OK, my second question. I dream vividly every night. If you could feature in one of my dreams, what would you be and why? And that's to number two. Dream every night, eh, Ange? That's right, mate. <laughs> if I'm going to star in your dream, then uh, I guess it's going to have to be on the beach in summer in Australia. And uh, you'll have to be sitting there in your one-piece cosy on, the, on a towel on the beach, looking out at the waves. I'll be the guy out there tearing those waves apart, waving back at you. Cooey, cooey. <laughs> Number three? Right, Angie. Um, well, I could uh, come into your dream as that poor cat that's poisoned, that you're viciously poisoned, <laughs> but I don't want to scare you off. So what I think I'd be, I'd come into your dream as a big, tall, sexy Italian and take you off to Roma for an exotic weekend, just the two of us. Let's hear a bit of an Italian, then. Please. Uh, Roma 3, Sampdoria 2. Have a word. Right, number one, please. So, you actually have time for dreaming? Well, if you actually run out of time for that anyway, but I'd actually be your very own lighthouse in a rampaging storm. And with my brilliance, I'd guide you safely into my harbour. OK, guys, you ready for my final questions? <laughs> right? Check. The one person I wouldn't want to run into if I was on a date would be my bank manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the last person you'd want to meet if you were out with me and why? Um, question to number three. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Angie, I've got a confession to make. I, Let's do it then. I actually work for a bank. <laughs> but, but, I think I carry enough clout to have a word with your manager and put his hat on straight. Really? But, as far as we're concerned, the, on our date, the person I wouldn't want to bump into would be uh, Julia Roberts. Oh, why's that then? Well, because I think she'd be gutted. Um, <laughs> Number one, please. I've actually got a twin brother. So the last person... Thank you very much. So the, <laughs> so the last person I'd want to see on our date would be his wife. Because if she thought I was him, we'd both be in big, big, big trouble. <laughs> OK, number two. OK, um, 
there is one person, <laughs> and his name's Fred Noel. That's who I'd not want to run into. Who? Ring a bell, Ange. Who? Fred Noel. Where's he when he's at home? Fred Noel's the guy that I borrowed one dollar off when I was six years old. Ah. Uh, I never paid back. him back, and I uh, always wonder whatever would have happened if I'd bumped into him. And if we bumped into him, it'd definitely spoil our night. And I wonder what Fred's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> Three questions. Yeah. Don't make your mind up just yet because I always say this. Here's our Graham <laughs> with a quick recap. Well, Angie, will your blind date be the twin with a grin who'd be smitten with your kitten? <laughs> or would it be number two, the boy from down under? He'd love you to be his koala if you could bear it, possum. <laughs> number three. He may not be wild about your cat, but he'd sure like you to be his pretty signorina. <laughs> the decision is yours. Graham, there, the decision is yours. Go for it, Angie. Number three. <laughs> well, I don't think you'd be sorry with your choice, Angie. I really don't think you'd be sorry with your choice. But you will be ever so upset at the two that really? you turned down. Yes. I mean, how could you? First of all, you turned down number one. He was from Birmingham, and that's our Greg. Come in, Greg. You like a bit of all right? You like? What do you mean, have a word? You like the way you walk? Yeah. I yeah. like the way he walks. Have a word. <laughs> no, he's gone now. Greg's gone. You also turned down number two. Oh. Gorgeous. You turned down our Martin from Perth in Australia. Come in, number two. Never mind, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you chose number three, and that was John from Hertfordshire. Come in, John. <laughs> well, this is our John, and I, I, I kind of like the her coming yeah, down. Yeah, 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 Superman curl. <laughs> Where are you going on the trip? Oh, you can pick. Oh, thank you. Well, tell you. No, no, tell you first. She picked you. Yeah. You, know. you picked the dead, Angie. You mean Maddie Moe? Pick a good one. You need me. Windsurfing and wigging. Two weeks in bath. <laughs> Only joking about. A trip to Luxembourg. Oh! <laughs> You I don't know, there's two of us, you see. I haven't you, been you've never been to Luxembourg? Look, no. Well, this is a trip. We, you'll be jetting off to Luxembourg and you'll be visiting a beer festival, isn't that nice? Sound. Do you like, do you like <laughs> I don't drink at all. You don't drink well? I don't mind watching. Apparently, it's safe to drink the water over there. <laughs> Needless to say, it will end up with a lovely romantic candlelight dinner. Wow. Yes. That sounds good. You can have your water, you can have the beer. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. All we ask is for you to come back from Luxembourg safe and sound next week and tell us all about it. We will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Angie and John. See you next week. Yeah. Well, we're going to take another break, but we will be back in a moment to find out how Dawn and Toby enjoyed their date in Halstead. Now, you remember Dawn and Toby, don't you? They were on the show last week. And this is how they met. <laughs> Let's get them on. You chose number two. That was Toby from Sussex. Come in, Toby.
welcome back. Now let's have a look at Dawn and Toby having fun in Halstead. Nice there, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> oh, buenos dias. Dos billete para vena, por favor. Oh, she talks English, we're all right. <laughs> That's, oh, I thought we were speaking that as well. Oh, you get some of your boarding cards. I hope you have a lovely flight. OK, thanks very much. Bye-bye, have a good time. See you later. Thank you, cheers, bye. Cheers. bye. 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 Nice one, here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. What a shame we don't drink. <laughs> this is always the first time, isn't it? That's great, <laughs> thank you. Terrific. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, this is beautiful, isn't it? These are... Look at the landscape. You can really the paint and stuff here. Bit bit dodgy. Dodgy. Yeah. Touch of watercolour. Bunch of ladies. Hey, you put your eyes off. Uh, that one looks like my mum. <laughs> uh, 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 look, look, young Silla, young Silla. Down, mate. Wait, drop something. What? Are you oh. shit? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I'll get used to it. I've always beaten my life. It's wicked. <laughs> oh, wow, this is amazing. Oh, look, look, you've got a hole in the roof. Think about singing here, it'll make me sound all right. No, I think you'll probably crack your eyes, will you? <laughs> oh, wow. Man, look at that then. That is one big stalactite. <laughs> I can't believe the scenes. What a freezer. <laughs> OK, Curran, I'll take over from here. <laughs> We're on a roll. Come on, honey, show them how it's done. Oh, show them how it's done, baby. <laughs> Wait, get out of the way. <laughs> We're coming through. Have you got your health plates on, mate? Eh? Don't need them, mate. Hello. So you're getting very good at this, darling. Don't get too used to it, darling. Why is that, then? Don't get too used to me driving you, because I could drive you a little bit around the bend. <laughs> <laughs> well, young Toby, I'll forget that remark about the young syllabus. <laughs> she did look like you, I said. She, she did, did look like you. She, she had a pair of bins on, you know. <laughs> Well, welcome back to Blind Day, Dawn and Toby. Now, Thank you. how was Halstead? I mean, did you warm to each other in the ice caves or at the end of the day, did you give each other the cold shoulder? Yeah. Let's have a quick butchers. This one, yeah. Um, the reason I picked Toby was because he was a bit of a nutter and he just came across as being a real spanner. <laughs> well, first reactions of uh, Dawn when the screen came back, though, she was a really nice looking salt. <laughs> and, uh, I just wanted to get hold of her and just like swing her around and that. Toby is a gentleman, but sometimes his table manners are all over the place. You know, I was, I was a bit boisterous and what have you, and I, I did belch a lot after the meal, so... He threw some ice cream in his cafe, and I threw some ice cream in his face, and he wiped it off on the tablecloth. And then again, I can't talk, because I was the one throwing the food in the first place. After our first romantic meal, I wanted to stand up and pull Dawn's chair away from her and be the perfect gentleman. But on the standing up, I uh, headbutted this lampshade and what have you. <laughs> Over the table. Fortunately, he didn't do any damage to his head. I think my head's a bit thick. Dawn was one of the lads. You know, she really did put her all in a muck around and what have you. But on her feminine side, she was flirtatious. I don't know if Toby fancied me at all, because most of the time, we'd be getting so well, he would hold hands or he'd put his arm around me, we'd have a kiss or a hug. I would have certainly liked to kiss Dawn. A big snog. Made any romantic overtures towards me, I suppose I would have been quite flattered. If, if Dawn had made a big pass at me and came on really strong, then I would have reacted in a natural way and just got hold of her and 
you know, <laughs> big sloppy thing. I don't think it's in his nature to be pushy or try and pour me or anything like that. It's not his style. We decided to go uh, swimming on, uh, on the last day of the date when we had a bit of time with each other. And uh, I saw Dawn in her swimsuit and I really wished I was that swimsuit. <laughs> He's got a big soft tummy. His friends call him Belly. His nickname. The closest I ever really got to Dawn is when we had a snowball fight and I, uh, I knocked her over and jumped, up, uh, jumped on top of her and uh, put snow in her face and her hair. And I'd got this snowball shoved down his jumper and we both fell over in the snow and we were rolling around in the snow and I'd got my legs wrapped around his neck like this. <laughs> I, I thought you had a great time together, but I was quite surprised at you, Toby. Hmm. Yes, I, mean, I was quite surprised myself. I know, <laughs> you came over to me on that film a little bit shy. I mean, on the show, you're really outgoing. But you're, you're quite a shy boy, aren't I'm you? I'm very bashful. Very bashful indeed. I can't look any girl in the eyes. Well, why didn't you... <laughs> why didn't you go for it? Because you were alone on the date, and yet he wasn't like this now, Dawn. Tell, what is the real Toby like? Because he's the outgoing person. Jack's the lad here. What is he really like? He's a big softie. Yeah. He's very cuddly and he's, he's lovely. And he's a gentleman. He's a bit of a nutter as well, but, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely got a lot of good points. And we do get on very, very well. And, and we have a scream. He said the closest you got on, on, the, on the date is when you were both rolling round in the snow having a laugh. Yeah. I mean, you look the perfect couple now, don't they, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. So why didn't this sort of... You're all invited to the wedding. Ah, well, I hope so, I hope so. Why wasn't it like this on the date now? Come on. Oh, I think it was, really. It's it was, just, but we were It was, but we were just being silly most of the time. We can't really be sensible for much longer than this. <laughs> <laughs> You seem like a very sensible, but quite fragile. Got a super figure. <laughs> She's got a lovely figure. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, though, Toby? You, you did say an awful lot of flattering things about Dawn. She's a very flattering person to say flattering things to. I think. Yes, I, I know, but romance takes. I mean. Well, I should take. Uh, is it, I don't know what the road is out there, but I should definitely take a journey out there on my own, and uh, hopefully Dawn will put me up. Yes, I'll look after him. I'll look after him well. You will look after him well. Well, yes. Dawn, if you could make the first move, because he said he was waiting for you, how are you going to make that first move? And are you going to do it now on the show? I think a bit like this. Deserve a medal, Dawn, for coping with Toby. Oh, it was it was great. She certainly was... got the chest to pin it on. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish you both a lot of luck in the future. <laughs> Thank you both very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. What can I say, Dawn and Toby? <laughs> This week, but we will be back next week to see how Barnaby and Sam and Angie and John enjoy themselves. And of course, we'll be arranging more blind dates. So until then, ta for now. Ta <laughs>